Thulacine is a simple word. It is a compound of two Greek roots, Thun and Kainos, that together name a kind of time place for learning to stay with the trouble of living and dying in responsibility on a damaged earth. Our epoch as one in which the human and non-human are inextricably linked in tentacular practices. The Thulacine, Haraway explains, requires sympoiesis, or making with, rather than autopoiesis, or self-making. The tent of the future, built for the 1964 World Expo, sits in Flushing Corona Park in the borough of Queens, New York. It is the most ethnically diverse urban area in the world. Flushing Corona Park is the site of two former world's fairs, coming from a history of a space built for the glorification of technology, our project aims to provide a space for human reflection of our current epoch. It is a museum built as a commentary on the Thulacine, at the intersection of history, technology, and nature. In addition, the Tent of the Future, designed by Philip Johnson in 1964, was a symbol of modernity and human achievement at the time. It is now in decay and ready to welcome a new life. When visitors walk into our building, we want to inspire a sense of awe. Dreams use memory fragments to create the images, thoughts and narratives. Similarly, our building is a composition of different senses that emphasize the experimental characteristics of the architecture. The notion of dreams is essential to our design process. Similar to the systematic process of dreaming, we generated a series of images using Generative Adversarial Networks GAN, built on various experiments early on in the semester. We want to make the space into an experience of mystique, blurring the line between reality and fantasy. One way to create this illusion is by recreating the image of the exterior columns in the existing structure throughout our building, contributing to a sense of familiarity within a totally foreign space. For our first physical experiment, we used a flexible silicone mold suspended within the framework of the pavilion to skew the form of columns and floor plates, and challenge their relationship to each other. Inspired by the idea of suspension and notion of growing, we wanted to weave the ideas coming out of the first experiment together. Referencing the forms by Ruth Asawa, we are physically weaving different spaces for different species together. Using a series of markers following the grid of the existing structure, we then casted a series of solids. This results in a series of spaces with different densities and opacities. The resulting mass is a series of surfaces that responds to various points of tension and compression. The program of our building is composed of a community center above grade, and a museum for Calusine below grade. In elevation, the different opacities of spaces are more evident. The process of dreaming was one of the main drivers of our project and our spaces were created much like fragments of a dream. The mesh weaves the fragments of spaces together to create a single, cohesive experience. Visitors enter through the north side of the building into the museum through a process of compression and release into a large central void that leads them into a series of meandering paths into fragments of spaces. Above grade, the community center programs is intertwined with sun gardens. Below grade, the museum program is intertwined with gardens for species that don't require sunlight. By weaving the site with its immediate context, connections were created with the existing park grid as well as nearby highways. The mesh is responsive to different weather conditions and could adapt its porousness. When wind blows past on the roof, the roof responds with an acoustic effect. Most people would be introduced to our building via passing it on the highway. It acts as a monument of illusion, and sits within the ambiguous nature of the park. 